So thank you for joining us today to talk about how to prepare for a job fair. Um, I want to point out that this information is relevant to in-person job fairs as well as virtual job fairs. So first, let's talk about your to-do list for these events. Um, you want to pre-register if possible, do your research, decide who to talk to, create or update your resume, and finally prepare for potential interviews. Throughout these next few slides, we're going to talk about these steps in a bit more detail. If possible, pre-register for the job fair. This could get your information out to the employer sooner, or oftentimes, if the event is held via Career Connections or NC Works, the staff will help review your resume and help make sure that everything looks presentable. If it does not, staff will assist in updating your resume for the event. Oftentimes, pre-registering ensures that you have a spot in the job fair. Make sure that you do your research. Most of the time, you will be able to view the list of employers who will be attending the hiring event. Always research the companies who will be in attendance, especially the ones that you want to speak with. This will allow you to ask specific questions about the job and the company and will show that you're interested in them. I would suggest also researching companies that you're not quite sure if you want to speak with or not because this could help you add another company or two um, to your list of who you want to speak with. If you are attending an in-person hiring event, deciding who to talk to by doing your research can help uh, save time the day of the event. Oftentimes, when attending an in-person job fair, you will be handed a job fair map of where each employer is located. Since you already know who you want to talk to, you can use your map to plan out your movement around the job fair so you don't have to waste time wandering around. Always take resumes with you to an in-person hiring event. You want to have enough resumes to hand out to all companies you uh, researched and decided that you wanted to speak with. Also, take a few extra because you never know if there's a company in attendance who might catch your attention and you want to talk with them, so therefore you will need a resume to hand out. Career Connections actually has a virtual job fair coming up October 5th through October the 8th. If you are in a health career program or you're thinking about going into a health career pathway, this event is for you. Our event is held through College Central Network. In order to participate, you must have your College Central Network activated, have a resume uploaded to College Central Network, and then register to attend the job fair. Once you have your resume in College Central and you have registered to attend, you can then view the employers who have signed up to attend the event, as well as their job openings. Once you have found an employer you are interested in applying with, you can then click the Apply Now button. You will have to create a cover letter to send to the employer. Once you hit the submit button, your resume and your cover letter will then be sent to the employer of your choice. If the employer is interested in speaking with you, they will then reach out to you to set up a time to meet via video chat. If you need assistance with creating or updating a resume or cover letter, the staff and career connections are ready to assist. Create, make sure that you create and practice your elevator pitch. An elevator pitch is a 30 second to 60 second pitch that tells the employer who you are, your skills, and your career goals. Imagine, if you will, that we are riding an elevator together and you ask me to tell me a little bit about yourself. I might say something like, my name is Sarah Green and I work at Caldwell Community College and Technical Institute as the coordinator of, our, of Career Connections, the Career Center for the School. Before starting work at, at the college, I worked for the state of North Carolina as an employment consultant for what is now known as NC Works for three and a half years. While there, I worked with clients to help find employment, worked on resumes and cover letters, assisted with information on their unemployment claims, and also worked with the trade program that assisted in sending laid off workers back to school so they could train for a new career. In the future, I would love to become a director for a company like this one. I'd be a great fit because I've been in this line of work for, three, for 12 years, have a passion for helping people find the career pathway they, are, they would enjoy. 
I also know how to do labor market research to help clients understand what their field of study is, um, what their field of study has to offer in the future, like job outlooks and salaries, as well as assist with resumes and job search, and how to manage a team of employees so we can ensure we assist everyone to the best of our abilities. Your elevator pitch should include the following. Make sure that you talk about the basics of you, but keep it related to the job and not your personal life. Your past and present work experience. Your future and where you see yourself in terms of your career goals. Tell them why you are a great fit for the company and why you're interested. And again, make sure you keep it short and sweet. All right, um, we're going to now talk about what to do the day of the event. So you need to make sure that you dress to impress, be confident and enthusiastic, be prepared to give your elevator pitch, uh, take notes, ask for business cards, and network. We will discuss these topics in a bit more detail over the next few slides. Dress to impress. Don't worry about being overdressed. You only have one chance to make a good first impression. Make a good and lasting impression by being dressed a little bit more formally than usual for your first meeting. However, it is appropriate to attend a job fair, in person and virtually, dressed in business casual attire. If you look at the images on the screen, you can see what business professional and business casual looks like for both men and women. If you need assistance in clothing for a job fair or an interview, please contact us in Career Connections. We have gift cards available to The Closet, which is a boutique that provides one-on-one -on -one shopping experience for those who need it most. Jessica Teeters, the owner, will walk through her store um, and she'll help you pick out several outfits to try on uh, along with accessories. So she'll walk through the store one-on-one -on -one with you and help you pick out clothing for an interview and for a job fair. Make sure that you wear something that makes you feel confident and your best self. Avoid clothing, a clothing that itches or that you don't have to keep uh, tugging up or pulling down. Stay away from anything that's flashy or trashy. Avoid clothes that will call extra attention to yourself. You don't want to take the focus off of you and your qualifications. Believe in yourself. Be confident and enthusiastic. Introduce yourself with a smile and handshake. At this time, a smile is perfect for both in-person and virtual hiring events. Top Resume stated that companies that are at the hiring event because they want to meet you and, more importantly, make a hire. If you're a student, talk about your academic and extracurricular experiences as well as your career interest and always be prepared to give your elevator pitch. It is advised to take a portfolio with you to hiring events so you can take notes. This allows you to keep track of the employers you spoke with, who you spoke with at the company, and your, their phone numbers and your next steps. Remember, the person pre representing the company may not always be the person you need to speak with to apply for a certain position within the company. So having a notebook to write down the correct contact information is imperative. Remember, if you don't record this information somewhere now, you will not be able to make use of the information later when it is needed. Before you leave the table or video chat, ask for a business card or contact information. This allows you to follow up with the employer or representative you spoke with. It is always a great idea to follow up with a thank you note thanking the representative for taking their time to attend the job fair and meet with you. While at an in-person job fair, make sure that you are networking. You never know who you might meet who will introduce you to your next job or career. Not only should you talk with employers, but take time to also talk with other job seekers. By doing so, they may know of a job that you'd be a perfect fit for who may not be represented at the event. If there are other professional organizations or colleges or universities that are in attendance at the event, Stop by and get information for future networking opportunities or information to help you further your education. So now we're going to talk about what to do after the event. So make sure that you follow up with the company representative, continue to network, and prepare for potential interviews. 
So first we'll talk about follow-up. Make sure that you send a thank you letter to the company representative that you spoke with at the event within 24 to 48 hours. Also, act on the recruiter's instructions about applying to the, for the position. This also means reaching out to the correct person who you may have been instructed to reach out to to apply for the position. Make sure that you continue to network. Stay in contact with the people that you met at the job fair. If the company does not have an opening that would be a good fit for you now, that does not mean that they won't have a job opening soon that you would be perfect for. Keep in touch with the company representatives as well as other job fair goers that you networked with while you're in it while you were in attendance. Prepare for potential interviews. Practice makes perfect. Practicing inter practice interviewing as much as possible. Career Connection staff will be happy to schedule a one-on-one -on -one mock interview with you. We can ask you industry-specific questions, help you learn how to answer those questions that are most asked during an interview, and you'll receive feedback after your mock interview is over. The more you practice, the more confident you will feel in a real interview. Career Connections is located on the Hudson campus of CCC and TI in F Building, Room 146. Our hours of operation are Mondays and Tuesdays, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m., and Wednesday, and Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. We are located on the Boone campus in W460, Room 111. Our hours on the Boone campus are Monday and Tuesday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., and other days and times by appointment. At this time, we would prefer that you schedule an appointment with us to help with social distancing. You can reach us by calling us at 828-726-2609 or by sending us an email to careerconnections at cccti.edu.